Hello, everybody. How are you today, this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey, and this is the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. It's on this podcast that we are encouraged through our struggles. We learn from our experiences, and we lean on the Lord. Please know that during this 10 to 15 minute episode that I'm not going to be judging you. I'm not going to be lecturing and yelling down at you, preaching at you, because I'm sharing what I am learning along my journey. And we learn together. Well, if you missed my episode, A New Song Rises Up, I hope that you'll go back to it because it's on that episode that is actually my book premiere of the book that just was released September 29th. In that book, I share bits and pieces of my personal journey, what I've learned, and how the Lord has rescued me and saved me. In all of my books and my podcast episodes, I point to the glory of the Lord. Well, in today's episode, the title is The Temptations, and that's not the singing group. In my daily devotionals in the past couple weeks, this phrase kept coming to me, and it grabbed my attention. Sin is crouching at your door. Sin is crouching at your door. Where is that? Well, it's in the Bible, in the section about the sacrifices that Cain and Abel made to the Lord. One pleased God, and the other one didn't. Cain had decided to go to his own way, and do what he wanted to do, and he expected God to accept it. Well, when it was rejected, Cain became jealous of Abel, and he reacted badly. Well, let me read to you that little tiny segment that I'm referring to. It's in Genesis chapter 4, verses 5 through 7, and it's in the New International Version. But on Cain he ha- and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. So God was warning him, warning Cain, not to allow himself to go beyond that anger and disappointment that he initially felt. And Cain could have fought off those feelings, or God wouldn't have been warning him. But did he listen to God? No. Cain lured his brother into a field and killed him. And then he faced terrible consequences. And those consequences lasted for generations. So let's travel back to the Garden of Eden. You know that Adam and Eve were tempted by the devil to eat of the forbidden fruit, and they did. And that caused the fall ever since Adam and Eve. And our flesh, our carnal ways are evil. So even internally, we have conflict going on between the spirit and our flesh to do good or to do badly. So we also have external forces, temptations that come to us, situations, circumstances, other people, offenses. Can anyone resonate with this? Have you ever come along a disappointment and, and anger? Sometimes, like Cain, we know in our heart that this disappointment stemmed from our own actions, our own mistakes. But instead, because we weren't following rules or the right way, we were taking shortcuts. But maybe that disappointment led us to blaming ourselves and focusing mostly on other people. Blaming other people, maybe blaming God. And everything, we have free will. And we can respond well, or we can react badly. It's our decision. (sighs) So what does it mean to you that sin is crouching at your door? Have you ever been in a situation where you know that your choice at that moment is going to be towards good and wholesome words and actions? Or if you choose, then it may lead to 
following mean-spirited ways and leading to ugly and evil words and deeds, maybe things that you cannot undo. The temptation is strong in that moment, but still you know that there is a choice in it. Will you decide to respond kindly or react emotionally? My upset and temptation happened in May. My son suddenly died. It was not because of the pandemic. It was because of unhealthy choices. And I was heartbroken. And during my grieving, I knew I had a choice. I could follow that path into a deep, dark self-pity and depression. Or I could start blaming everyone around me for what happened. I could blame God. Or I could take the higher road, which I knew was God wanted me to do. And I praise the Lord for the 48 years that he allowed me to spend with my son. And I praised him for knowing that my son was in heaven. Haven't we all been in the land of temptations? Sometimes we respond well. Sometimes we react emotionally. We may be fully aware of how our reaction to that situation will bring ugliness and wrongdoing. But there we go with revenge, retaliation in full bloom. Hmm. And has that happened to you? Were there consequences? Did you lose a friendship or a relationship because of your decisions? Though well, that reminds me of the natural law of sowing and reaping. When a person sows into the, their life thoughts, words, and actions that are good, wholesome, and kind, they can hope for a good result to ultimately come, maybe favor, blessings, answered prayers, and eventually a great harvest. But what if that same person decides to ignore warnings and decides to go along thinking, saying, and doing mean and ugly things? With the concept of the law of sowing and reaping, that person can expect that negative results will follow, maybe not immediately, and maybe not permanent or fatal, but regardless, the cause and effect will not give them what they desire in life. How differently Cain's story could have been had he listened to God's warning and he had decided not to go along with his anger and disappointment. What if Cain had decided not to allow that temptation to sin to grow, to go further? What if he had rejected it, that temptation to remain angry and instead he repented and continued without sin? Hmm, that would have been wonderful. The results would have been very different. Have you ever experienced an offense, a disappointment, an upset, and you gave into the temptation to react badly? What were your resulting consequences? Regret, shame, guilt, remorse? That's all born of it. Even then, there is a remedy. We have choices again. You can ignore your regret, your feelings of remorse, and you can continue in the bad attitude that you already have. Or you can decide to turn against yourself, and that's with mental, mentally beating yourself up and negative self-talk. Or you can decide to turn to God in repentance. Turn to God with a humble, contrite heart and asking forgiveness. And what will He do? He will forgive you. We can't escape the temptations that will come but we can decide to think, say, and do what we are going to say, think, say, and do when they come. As I referenced in a previous episode, In the Desert, temptations are catered specifically for each of us because our enemy knows what our weaknesses are. Our enemy knows what will trigger us, what will bother us the most. The Word of God will keep us it tells us to keep ourselves alert, to have a sound mind, to put on the full armor of God. And of course, that includes the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So it's important to study the Word and be ready. Because the enemy, our adversary, is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Hmm. Just like in John 10.10, 10, the thief 
seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus wants us to have an abundant life. He has already overcome. When we lean on Him, we're not alone. Anyone who has spent any time on the planet Earth knows the bad stuff can happen. Disappointments will come. Sometimes it's unfair. But we can always turn to the Lord. He is our strength, our refuge in times of trouble. Each person can decide when they're tempted to pray, to praise the Lord, and to come to Him for deliverance. When we turn to God with praise, thankfulness, and patient faith, amazing things can happen. Well, I don't want to leave this episode without giving listeners um, opportunity to come to Jesus. It's obvious how much God loves us in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So regardless of where you stand today, in your relationship with the Lord, I ask you, I encourage you, to please pray with me now and out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know, I believe, that Jesus is the only begotten Son, and I believe that Jesus died on the cross even for me. He paid for my sins, and He defeated death. He arose from the grave. But Lord, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins. I walk away from them now. Please help me to stand firm because I will be tempted. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless. I am nothing without you. I ask you to come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. With that prayer, you're telling the Lord that you believe, and you're choosing to walk away from sin, and He'll help you in that. And you're pledging to serve Him. We begin our relationship with the Lord. And I want to encourage you in that, to study the Word of God, pray, praise the Lord, obey Him, and be be filled with gratitude. And as you grow in your faith, you will find inner peace and joy even in the midst of circumstances and challenges. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Well, I want to thank you for joining me in this episode of Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6 Eastern Standard Time. I invite you to come to my website, KarenJaneCasey.com, where you can give me comments. Any kind of feedback is appreciated. And when you get there, you can find out more information about my books, my podcasts, blogs that I've written. And always my intent is to promote peace and hope overcoming and healing, always through turning to God. Well, thank you and God bless.